Well, Ed Schwartzman's son, Ben, died by suicide 14 years ago. But thanks to a chance encounter with a movie producer, Ben's music will live on. Devin Ridgeway has the story. He's a very gifted uh, singer-songwriter. Um, he died by suicide at the age of 19. And um, he died on October 15, 2007. It was a gorgeous day, much like today. Literally, a day like today. A day that everybody says, let's go outside and enjoy life. Well, when you're in a deep, dark depression, and you're bipolar, and you're possibly schizophrenic, and you're on meds, you're just, you're just looking at the world differently. Uh, his suicide uh, was um, not a total surprise. He talked about death. He, he, he liked talking about, he was not a dark kid. When I say he talked about death, uh, he just liked to talk about life, life in the afterlife. With Dad, what do you, th do you think is life after, after death? And that's, those are normal questions. He was a very, um, uh, he was a thinker. He loved to think and he loved to probe and he loved to ask questions. And a lot of them I didn't have the answers to. I mean, who does? And ever since then, I've been thinking, what can I do with this music? I need to do something. Typically, the comments were, you know, I got to tell you, when you told me the story, I was thinking, okay, it's, a, it's obviously it's a sad story. Dad lost his son and he wants to keep his music alive, and I understand that. But holy cow, when I listen to the music, this is good friggin' music. Those kinds of feedbacks that I would get over and over and over again compelled me to say, don't give up. Don't give up. All I gotta do is find the right connection and something good is gonna happen. Three years ago, a movie producer walked into my restaurant and asked me for a contribution um, to feed his staff. And lo and behold, about 60 days ago, he walked into the restaurant, said, Ed, I have a surprise for you. And I don't, I've only seen this guy a handful of times. His name is John Armstrong. I said, what, what, what kind of surprise? He said, Ed, do you remember three years ago you gave me Ben's music? Yes. He says, I haven't forgotten about it. And I have a friend who owns a music studio called Airtime Studios. It was about two days later we drove up. And as we were sitting there, there was a band that was in the studio getting ready to record. Uh, it's a band called the, uh, the Highlanders. And about a week later, one of the kids from the band called me and said, uh, Ed, you don't know me, but I'm one of the guys in the band. I was really moved by your story. He said, I, I want to help you release these songs. He says, let's release two. I said, whatever two you think makes sense. I think he picked the two, not necessarily the two best, but the two most appropriate for the story, which is my apology and let me go. When Ben was going through all his struggles, the thing, we always felt that if we could at least keep him writing, keep him performing, everybody has their thing. Well, for Ben, it was obviously music. He was just so gifted, so gifted, and so beautiful in the way he would play that guitar and the way he would sing. But it makes me so happy to know that he's entertaining people. And so I'm now listening to it every day in the car. And I'm singing along and I'm literally humming the song and, and singing the words, which I haven't done for 14 years. You know, I don't know where we're going from here, but we're going somewhere. We're definitely going somewhere. Ben's music can be found on Spotify, Amazon, and Apple Music.